Hello, everyone. Good Hello. afternoon. Hi, my name's Lauren. I'm the children's librarian at the Studio City branch of the Los Angeles Public Library. Thank you so much for joining us for a Hollow Week. And our special guest is Joe Ballerini, author of A Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting, which has also recently become a next Netflix film, and there's more in the series, right, Joe? Oh my gosh, so much more. There's so much more. Book two, book three. What do you want? Oh my gosh, you've got <laughs> that. There's book three too. If you love the movie, it, read the book. Exactly, exactly. So if you have you already watched the Netflix movie, A Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting, there are three books in the series, so you can catch up with those books. And I'll tell you later on how you can use library to go service and also the digital services to enjoy Joe Ballerini's books. But first, let's enjoy some time with Joe Ballerini and celebrate Halloween together. So Joe, before we begin, I have a question for you. Yes. Are you ready? <laughs> because we're celebrating Halloween. Do you have a special Halloween memory? Uh, yes, many of them. Um, but the the best Halloween memory that I have is when we were kids in Rhode Island and uh, I went trick or treating with friends and we decided that it was time to really up our game uh, for ho for Halloween. And so uh, we heard that shaving cream was a thing. So we took shaving cream. Uh, and, you, you know, we knew that there was like other kids out there that would like egg you or throw shaving cream at you. And so we took um, the top of like an aerosol hairspray can off like a, you know, like a little aerosol spray thing. And we put it on the top of our shaving cream can so that when we sprayed the shaving cream, it would make up just a perfect jet. Like we're talking better than silly string shaving cream everywhere. And I'll never forget, we went to one street where it was pure pandemonium and chaos and we just let loose. And it was just, there was, I, I, maybe it's just, you know, my imagination probably, but there was just like toilet paper everywhere and shaving cream and eggs. And I remember, I remember there was like a bagel that came and slapped us in the face with cream cheese and we were spraying shaving cream everywhere and I got really messy and it was wonderful. It was, and, and I remember being like, oh no, I've ruined my costume. My costume has been obliterated. My dad's gonna be so upset. But when he picked us up, he was like, looks like you had fun. And I was like, yes, okay. <laughs> this is the one night of the year where we could just do this. All right, let's go nuts. So that was a really, really uh, a great, a great Halloween memory. <laughs> Don't do it though, kids. You don't need to. You don't need to spray shaving cream or toilet paper people's yards. Don't do that. Do it. Don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. Don't well, do it. I have to say, just from that Halloween memory, we know that you are a storyteller, and you wrote the script for that Netflix film, which yes. I love because all the favorite parts of the book were in the film. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Netflix. <laughs> especially the party scene. So just from that Halloween memory, when you were talking about the shaving cream going all the way over, you did a lot of math. There was, Kelly loves math. The main character loves math. Why did you do that? Um, well, we did that because we really wanted to visualize how smart Kelly is and also to show that she's really a great little like Sherlockian like investigator. Um, and you know, I'm honestly not that good at math, but our director, Rachel Talley is a uh, uh, very good at math. She comes with a very mathematical scientific mind. And also Netflix is really interested in sort of doing really STEM forward, uh, science and math thinking. And so it was just a really great opportunity to show Kelly's brain working and putting everything together and pulling all these equations together. Um, and it's just kind of cool because you don't really get to see, look, if, if that's the way I saw math, I think I would do pretty well in school, but you've never actually seen math done in this way. And it's a really kind of a cool, inventive, creative way to see the way that her brain works. I loved that. I really enjoyed those scenes. Yeah. Now, Joe, I believe that you have a special guest with you. 
Would you like yeah. to introduce your special guest? Yeah, he's a little, you know, he's a little, little wild, a little crazy, but because he's he's a big fan, he's a big fan of the Los Angeles Public Library. We decided that he could come, he could come say hi. He just wanted to say hi really quick. This is this is Snaggle. Now this is Snaggle version 1.0. So Snaggle, <laughs> say hi to everybody, Snaggle. Snaggle 1.0, he's, you know, not necessarily, we don't really let him out that much uh, to say hi to the kids. I don't know why. I mean, he's got such a beautiful face. He's such a handsome, handsome man. But uh, Snaggle, he's one of the toadies. He's what the toadies look like in the book. But in the movie, kids, and I bet they're very, they look very, very different. Rightfully so, too, because I don't think you'd really want to see Snaggle coming at you all the time. Uh, all right, Snaggle, thank you very much. <laughs> very much. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. He's he's just gonna he's just gonna listen for a little bit and put candy down there. I think that was a good choice because in the book, all of the monsters in Joe Valerini's book, A Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting, are very frightening. The <laughs> The yeah. illustrations of the book, they're very frightening. The shadow monster also is kind of shaped like this. And then when yeah. they catch the shadow monster in the movie, he's this cute little blob with eyes. Yeah. So yeah. I think it was a good move. <laughs> yeah. I the, Yes, I agree. I think it was a good move. Those toadies, they, they just need a little less, a little less horror, a little bit more humor. And I think that that's yeah. they did a very good job with them for sure. But in your book, too, you definitely also keep that Joe Ballerini humor. So I love that the book and the film both have humor, but are also spooky and fun for Halloween. Yeah, that's all, that's the key, right, is you don't want to push it too far to the edge where you're just terrified and you've given kids nightmares. That is not the goal, actually, kids. It's not to give you nightmares. Uh, it, and you really want to have a good time and make kids laugh at the things that they're scared of and not have them be overwhelmed. We want kids to feel empowered to not just be like, oh no, there's a horrible monster, but to be able to say, oh, okay, that's like a that's a silly thing that I can I can conquer with some humor. So I think that's very, very important, especially with with uh, kids, kids entertainment. With 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 talking to you guys, I think it's very, very important for, for you to have some laughs and to realize you can laugh at the monsters of this world. Definitely. Now Joe, I know we were gonna save the questions for the end but we definitely have some great questions right now. So why don't we go to the comments and answer oh, some yeah. questions. And, and, then, <laughs> and then Joe is actually going to read from the second book of the Babysitter's Guide to the Monster Hunting series. So we're gonna enjoy a spooky story with Joe. And then after that, if you have any more questions, please share them in the chat and we'll answer some right now. So a question we have is, do you have, oh, I know that question we can't, ask right at the moment all right um, because someone is already asking if there's going to be a second film <laughs> i'm sorry someone's blowing their leaf blow in the background apologies okay i watched the movie but haven't read the book yet in what ways is the movie different from the book did you have to change cut out or add anything for the screenplay uh yes we did thank you very much for that question is that NY Schmoo? Yes. Thank you, NY Schmoo. Um, yeah, we had, we did have to change uh, a few things from the book to the movie. One of the biggest things was the the third act, the sort of finale of the book is much bigger. Jacob's nightmares come to life and they take over the whole town and it's just sort of an insane invasion of nightmares and the babysitters are flying around fighting all these nightmares while they're trying to stop the Grand Guignol. And if we did that, the movie would have been really, really, really expensive. Um, so we sort of condensed it down to what is the core story here. And the core story is Kelly versus uh, the Grand Guignol. So that was the important part. We really kept that the most. Um, and But you can read the book. And in the book, there's just, I'm just going for it. I'm having a great time just throwing all these different types of monsters and crazy things from a kid's imagination uh, at the babysitters. And it's a really good time. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of differences, but there's also a great deal of similarities. One of the biggest similarities that I'm happiest with, one of the things that has survived from the book to the movie is the friendship between mm -hmm. uh, Kelly and Liz. That's always mm -hmm. been a really great, empowering, supportive, 
friendship. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. that's something that, I, that I've, I'm really happy that that was able to be uh, kept throughout the entire um, story. So that in the movie, it's it's very much the same, that sort of friendship of like, hey, you know, you don't need to be this kind of uh, a, a wimpy kid. You can actually, you know, come and fight monsters with me while Kelly is also helping Liz out, come to terms with mm -hmm. uh, what with her brother. So yeah, there's a lot. Read the book, watch the movie. You tell me all the differences that you spotted and I'll give you a gold star. And, and definitely, yes, NY Schmoo. Thank you, NY Schmoo. Also, the if you've seen the movie already, it's not going to ruin the book or vice versa. So that's what right. I also like about it. It's not going to ruin it either way. <laughs> yeah, it won't. But let's answer, let's answer another question from NY Schmoo. Right, why, do the, why do the kids stay in their beds instead of running away when monsters come in? Mm. Good question, NY Shmoo. I think Jacob is so absolutely terrified that something is underneath his bed, much like I was when I was a kid. So I would just sort of stay in bed. And I always thought, oh, that's like the best thing is if you just pull your hands up over the edge of the bed and a, and a, and a goblin hand can't come and get you. I always thought, I, and I, I don't know if NY Shmoo, if you think this, that that's the safe zone where you're just like, oh, if I just hide here. Um, so I think that the kid logic is, oh, if I just stay here on this bed, that's the protector. Um, but it turns out, no, that's that's actually not the best idea. So NY Shmoo, you've got the right idea. If, um, if something's going down, uh, go find your parents immediately and tell them, hey, there's a toady underneath my bed trying to get me. Now, Joe, I think it's time for you to tell us a story. Are All you right. ready? Are, no, are I, you have ready? To, I have to get ready myself because I have to okay. have the correct ambiance. I am ready. You're ready. All right, are hold you, on. I'm going to. Yeah. Ooh. I'm ready. Ooh. And then I, I also have my electric tea, tea lights. So everyone at home, if you want to get into the spooky mood, you can also make a spooky mood wherever you are. You can dim the lights, put on some flashlights, some tea lights. You know what else I'm going to do, Joe? I'm going to get my blanket. But I'm not going to hide in the bed and my schmoo. I'm just taking this blanket just to just to go like this while Joe, Joe tells us a story. Right. All right, Lauren. Right. If you can, right. see, if you can go. hang. It's so dark in here now. Hold on. There we go. All right. So this is from book two. Um, this is from book two. This is a part where uh, Kelly is running from the Spider Queen, and uh, she happens upon her friends who are at uh, Deanna's house. Who, if you watch the movie, if you read book one, Deanna and her don't really have the best of relationships. Um, but Deanna is um, sort of teasing. Kelly a little bit here and wants to scare her. So Deanna says, hey, I have an idea. Let's play Hail Harriet. Hail Harriet was a creepy kids game in Rhode Island that have, they've been playing for decades. It was the local version of Bloody Mary. It was rumored that if you turn off the lights, lit a candle and said Harriet Hargrave three times while looking into a mirror, you would see the ghost of Harriet Hargrave, the infamous mansion murderer in the reflection. Given my present circumstances and the fact that Curtis and Cassie had disappeared while investigating Hargrave Manor, this game was the last thing in the world I wanted to play. No way, I said. Too late. You were mean. Now you have to do what we want, said Deanna, shutting off the lights. I know how much you love weird stuff. I've heard rumors about you and the babysitters. Sounds spooky. I'm into it, Tammy said, lighting a candle. They gathered before the mirror and began to chant in gruesome rhyme. Harriet Hargrave, child, what did you do? Snipped and clipped your family in two. Did you mistake your parents for a hedge? What evil thing sent you over the edge? Seriously, you guys, I said, I'm not playing. But they kept going. Harriet Hargrave, what else will you do? Say her name three times and she'll come for you. Shadows darkened. The little baby Theo stirred in my arms. He wasn't crying yet. Their voices were low and eerie. Harriet Hargrave, 
Harriet Hargrave, the hair on my arms rose. Cut it out. Deanna looked at me in the mirror and smirked. She was loving seeing me so freaked out. Harriet Hargrave. We stood in the silent darkness, staring into the mirror. Deanna suddenly screamed. I jumped. The girls shrieked and grabbed one another. Got you, Deanna cackled, pointing in my face. You guys are such snowflakes. The other girls giggled and playfully shoved Deanna. I sighed and shook my head. But as they walked away from the mirror, I saw the candle flame flicker in an invisible wind. Is the heat on? Asked one of the girls. I'm freezing. Deanna, Tammy, and the princesses went back to checking their phones. The baby in my arms started to cry. I anxiously looked around the room. We were alone, but why was the baby crying? He wasn't hungry or tired or stinky. Something dark caught my eye. In the mirror, a teenager with black pigtails and a ragged floral print dress was standing at the foot of the bed. Her head was tilted at an odd angle. She was holding something behind her back. Tammy's dresser thumped as I backed into it. Harriet's scowling eyes snapped in my direction. Ugh, take your meds, Kelly. It was just a joke, said Deanna. Harriet's gaze locked on the baby. She smiled hungrily. An inky sludge ran down her pale chin, dripping down her dress. Go away, I whispered, snatching my backpack. Don't tell me to go away. We're in my room. You go away, Tammy said. Don't you see she's right there, I said, pointing frantically. Hardy har, Tammy said flatly, as Harriet Hargrave stood beside her. Ah, oh, wonderful. Now I could add being able to see ghosts to my list of weirdo abilities. I swung the baby Theo toward the door. Slam! A roaring wind banged it shut. The girls yelped. I tried to open it, but it was being held closed by an invisible force. Tammy slapped on the lights. Pop! The bulb shattered. The door bucked and rattled. Harriet giggled high-pitched as if she were playing an amusing game. Stop it, Kelly! D Tammy demanded. Harriet walked through her. Tammy shuddered. Leave us alone, I screamed, ripping the door open and running into the hall with the baby. The teen spirit followed me from the bedroom and raised a pair of rusty hedge clippers from behind her back, slowly stepping toward me. That's Harriet Hargrave. The forces of darkness can kiss my butt because you are not getting this baby, I screamed, bolting into the living room where I hid behind the blinking Christmas tree and opened the guide. She reads the guide and finds out something. My options seem limited. None of the weapons in my backpack would work. I looked around for Harriet, but she wasn't there. Near the couch, there was a robotic Santa Claus waving its mechanical arms slowly back and forth. Ornaments on the tree branches shuddered. I saw in the shiny glass balls the warped reflection of Harriet Hargrave lunging at me. I dove out of the way, holding Theo, the baby, like a football. The tree crashed into the wall. Ornaments shattered. She's gone insane, Deanna said with a smirk. She, Tammy, and the rest of the princess pack were standing by the doorway. Giggling, Harriet Hargrave grabbed Christmas knickknacks from the mantle and chucked them at the girls. Tammy got pelted with an elf on the shelf. Deanna took a Christmas stocking full of candy to the face. Harriet picked up the ba picked up the tree by its trunk and swung it around the living room. The girls froze in shock. They couldn't see Harriet, but they could see the seven-foot-tall Christmas tree flailing in midair. Stop being so aggressive, Kelly, shouted Deanna. Um, Kelly, how are you doing that? Tammy said, quietly stunned. I'm not. It's Harriet Hargrave. The girls gawked at the hovering Christmas tree as it chased them down the hall. The girls shrieked and ran into Tammy's bedroom, locking the door. Harriet cackled and tossed the tree at me. Harriet Hargrave, I commanded, by the order of the Rhode Island babysitters, I order you to leave this house. Harriet snipped her hedge clippers at me, opened her mouth impossibly wide, and screeched out a foul wind. Uh, so much for shouting her out of the house. I stood my ground, clutching the baby against my hammering heart. Snip, snip, when Harriet's clippers. The guide said not to show fear, but I was one scream away from pee in my pants. Ornaments that were scattered across the floor crunched under my sneakers as I backed into the living room. The robotic Santa smiled and waved. An overloaded wall socket stuffed with 10 power strips crackled and sparked, causing the Christmas lights that jammed into it to pulse in the dark windows. Snip, snip, grated the creepy clipper blades as Harriet stalked toward me. 
You leave me and my friends alone, I screamed at the apparition, glancing at the electrical socket. Okay, so I'm not exactly besties with Deanna, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna let you hurt her or the princesses. They're actually cool. You know, just a little narcissistic. I guess I'm jealous. And if I'm honest, well, whatever. That's my own thing. If Tammy wants to hang out with other people, fine. Just leave them alone and get out of this house. Harriet dove at me, clippers wide open for my throat. I ducked, and with my free hand, I grabbed a string of Christmas lights off the window. I threw them at the hedge clippers just as the blades snapped closed, cutting into the wire. Sparks shot through Harriet. She jolted and shrieked as the string of bulbs popped like fireworks. Smoke shot from her pigtails. I shielded the baby just before she burst into a thousand whizzing, screaming sparks. Tammy's bedroom door creaked open. You wrecked my house, Tammy said. It was the ghost of Harriet Hargrave, I said. Are you for real serious right now? You expect us to believe a ghost did this? Deanna said, I was speechless. Oh, I did not want to meet Harriet Hargrave ever with her hedge clippers. They're scary hedge clippers, I know. Yeah, it's based on uh, a, a, a Rhode Island urban legend of um, Lizzie Borden, I guess, who apparently, yeah. Well, just don't look up Lizzie Borden, kids. Scary no. stuff. No, don't, don't Google it. Don't Google it, kids. Don't Google it. <laughs> Thank you, Joe, that was so much fun. I think you I okay? feel better now. Good. Yes, I feel better. Put my okay. life back on. Harriet Hargrave is gone. Okay. I feel oh. better. Okay. All right. Everyone, if you have any questions for Joe, you can put it in the chat right now. And Joe, I have a question. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about how you got the ideas for all the monsters in all three of your books? Just the so, stuff that, so just just yeah. uh, just a couple monsters. All the monsters. There's a lot well, of them. So just a, just a few. If you could just let us know, know, just a few of there's how you got the ideas. <laughs> it's usually the stuff that scares me. Like toadies, it was always like, oh, is there something underneath my bed that's small that could come out from underneath the bed and possibly burrow through tunnels and jump out and grab me? Shadow monster, scared. You know, pretty pretty self-explanatory. Scared of the dark, pretty easy. Um, the Grand Guignol, the Grand Guignol was inspired by, uh, he, uh, in the book he has hooves. So he's got creepy little goat hooves. And that was inspired by, I went to summer camp one summer in Rhode Island and they showed us a rock where they said a demon stood upon this rock and he was on fire and his hoof burned into the rock. And you can actually see hoof marks in the rock, I've looked this up, it's not just, and so there's just a lot of stuff that I pull from lore, mythology, from the sort of like fun, you know, New England is just filled with like crazy old tiny folklore uh, and also very like Lovecrafty and creepy lore, but also there's just a lot of great different monsters and urban legends in all sorts of different cultures around the world. And that's been really fun to see, you know, monsters from Japan, from monsters from Italy, you know, all over the world. And so there's just so many uh, great scary things that people tell themselves, I guess, around the world in order to either get kids to fall in line or to warn you doing something. Um, so, you know, it's my own fears, but also the fears of the world too. You definitely did a great job. I love all, all your monsters and all the books. You're nice. very, it's very unique. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I was a kid, I remember being reading Dungeons and Dragons and being like, and uh, uh, an older friend of mine was like, hey, check this out. This is Dungeons and Dragons. And I remember being like, this is, I said to him, I said, I can't look at this. This will give me nightmares. And so I think maybe there's something in that, that whole sort of fantasy realm too, that's just, um, you really kind of draw from. Now we have some some emojis. Thank you for the, all the wonderful emojis and good book. I agree. Thanks. I agree. <laughs> this will be a good segue before we answer some more of NY Schmoo's questions. I have a feeling NY Schmoo is one of my book lovers. 
And why, Shmoo? Are you? A, yes. I, I, have a, I have a. I have a question for you. Are you a book lover? <laughs> Are you a book lover, and why, Shmoo? Because you're very, very well read. I could tell. <laughs> so, everyone, again, if you have any questions for No, you can put it in the chat. In the meantime, I'm going to put some information in the chat of how you can read Joe's books. So right now the library has, the Los Angeles Public Library has a library to go service where you can make contact free pickup appointments at the library. So if you want a placehold for a babysitter's guide to monster hunting, all three books in the series, you can, and then pick it up at a library to go hub. I'll put that information in the chat. And of course I forgot to put up my library card like I always do with, with li your library card. I gotta find mine. <laughs> I use I use the Libby app. I love the Libby app. I'll show you my Libby app. Yes, please, Joe. And everyone, those books, all of Joe Ballerini's books are actually also available on Overdrive or Libby and also Hoopla Digital. So I will be putting that yes. information in the chat for you. And while I'm doing that, let's answer another question from NY Schmoo. There you go. Oh, Ooh, yeah. you have what? to place a hold on it. You have to place a hold on it, guys. Uh, book two, got to place a hold. Book three, place a hold. Lauren, we're doing it. This is great. And we uh, we even have the audio book on there, too. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. God. Thanks, guys. And also, the audio books are also available on Hoopla Digital. So, all yes. that information in the chat for you right now while I'm doing that. Let's answer another question from NY Shmoo. NY oh Shmoo God. asks, I, I can't, I love saying NY Shmoo. Can't stop. How long does it take you to write a book? And do you write every day? And if so, and if so how long? Uh, writing a book takes a very long time. Um, it takes probably about uh total six months to write a, one of these and then on top of that then you have another six months of the editor editing and making suggestions and looking at art and looking at cover art so it takes a long time i write every day i it's a job it's just a job like every other job you've got to punch in at nine o'clock and you punch out at five o'clock usually it goes a little bit longer you know um you know, sometimes it's nine to eight, but you know, that's like maybe with a long lunch or something like that in between. But uh, yeah, that's, that's how long it takes every day. You know, I take a, you know, you take a weekend off or something like that, but I, 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 I love it. I love being able to write and being able to do this for a living. So I do it as much as I possibly can. I can tell that you love, you love doing it. I can tell. Did you get huh. that same love of writing your books as you did for the script for the movie? Did you enjoy it just as much or, or did you enjoy it as much, but it was just different? Yeah, you definitely enjoy writing the script a lot because then you're writing it with other friends, basically. You're writing it with a, a, a larger team, you know, writing it with the, the producers, writing it with the studio, writing it with the directors. So there's, a, it's, if you're if you're if you open your mind to treat it like a little bit more like play, then you'll have a you'll have much more fun writing a book. You get to lock yourself in the room for you know months on end and not get out, go out and grow a really long beard, um, and that's fun on its own. If you like that, apparently some people do. Apparently I do. Um, but writing the script is really awesome because it's all these wonderful, great collaborations, and you get so many uh, awesome ideas from different people. So there, it's different levels of, different kinds of fun, but all fun in between. Excellent. Let's see here. Now, did you did you see Joe and my Shmoo is a wonderful family. And my Shmoo, you're fans. a whole family? You're an entire yes, entity. and they're and big I fans. Knew I knew it, <laughs> Shmoo. Thanks, Shmoo. All right, look at that. Shout out, we got Foster Wilson here as well. What's up, Foster? Okay. Because Shmoo, love you, Shmoo. You, we Shmooed it, though. I think we Shmooed it. Um, yes, but NY Shmoo, I have to say, oh, you all many. had great questions all together. And I love that you're watching as a family. That makes me so happy. Okay, okay Joe, let's see what Foster Wilson asks. Okay. Foster Wilson says, 
How many books have you made? Well, I've made three books and they're all about babysitters fighting monsters. I'm working on the next ones. I promise you, we got some more coming, but I got these three I'm making the movie. I'm exhausted. So we're gonna we're gonna keep trying. Believe me, we're gonna we're gonna keep making some more books, I promise you. But basically three right now. All all these. I'm making more, I promise. Oh my, we're finding so much about NY Schmoo, the whole family. They're from New York City. I'm also from New York City, so that's probably why I like you guys. And right. my favorite cartoon right. character as a kid was the Schmoo. The and Schmoo. NY Schmoo. Yeah. I love it. Okay, everyone. So we'll wait just for a couple more seconds, just in case anyone else has any questions for Joe Ballerini. And while we're, oh, Yay! And while we're waiting to see if there's any more last minute questions for Joe, I just have one more question. Oh, we have one. Oh, this here is we a go. great one. This is a great question. And I, this question, I I think everyone can use some advice about this. How do you re-energize? Hmm, from Tiffany Hogan. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for yes. asking, Tiffany Hogan. Mm -hmm. um, how do you re-energize? Well, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of long walks, some runs. You know, you go for runs, and, or or just moving moving around because writing, you're sitting all the time and sort of just there. And whenever you get a little like, hey, I gotta I gotta get up, or I'm a little like slow here. It's amazing what happens if you get up, you run around, you walk around, you go for a go for a hike, or you go for a walk the dog, or just do something really really physical. Great re-energize because then you come back and your blood is pumping. And then it's all going in your brain, and then you got a lot of great stuff coming out. Um, Re-energize also by um, making a, making a great dinner or a lot of coffee. Those other things are 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 very very helpful. And um, music. And then you know, lately I found Tiffany is I just. Uh, I'll, I'll just turn off everything, just all the screens and everything like that. I think that lately um, the the idea that, oh, it's relaxing to just scroll through your phone, not mm. so much. Turns out, mm. actually, I just go, you know what? And it feels like, oh, I want to. I put the phone down and I, I just I just enjoy. And this is like, the kids are going to be like, what are you talking about? But all the adults are going to be like, that makes total sense. It is a joy to just sit there and just embrace the silence of your home. If it is quiet, if you can find a quiet place, I highly recommend just, you know what, all the emails and all the texts and all the everything will, will that'll happen, but just give yourself a few minutes to just kind of not even, you're not even trying to think of anything. You're just letting it just be and just kind of, and it's, that's awesome because I think as you know, when you're writing or you're, you're trying to be creative or whenever you're doing anything, you know, that's, requires a lot of concentration. It's easy to just have your brain is still on the treadmill where you're just like still going, 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 and you get off the treadmill and, you're st and your body still feels like it's running. You're, I feel like my mind does the same thing. So I, I try to just close my eyes for at least five to 10 minutes, not a nap, because if, if you could take a nap, take a nap. But, but if you just close your eyes and just give it some nice silence for a second, that's that's pretty awesome. That's that's pretty fantastic. And I see great friends on Zoom uh, or on FaceTime, and I you know talk to great friends, and that's a really great energizing way. And also, just playing with my kids is pretty awesome too. That's a pretty good way to energize because my my son Theo, you know, we have a newborn. She's four weeks. She's not really uh, uh, that. You know, she's not playing with toys. But my almost four-year-old, this kid is giving me ideas nonstop. I mean, he is with the way he plays with his action figures uh, is actually quite inspiring to the point where he'll he'll be like, "Oh, and, and this is where we're the astronauts on the moon, and they're fighting the aliens." And I'm like, "That's actually let me just yeah. write that down, dude." So you know, all of that, basically everything, just stepping away from the screens and being uh, being in the being in the present is pretty pretty re-energizing. I love that answer. And I just I have a question, Joe. Has Theo seen any parts of the film? The yes, part? he has. 
He knows it's dad's movie um, because that's all dad's talking about. Um, But he knows it's dad's movie and he gets to the part where the toadies come out and then Mm -hmm. he's usually like, we're done. So Mm -hmm. like father, like son, I couldn't stand the first five minutes of Ghostbusters. I peaced out after (laughs) after five minutes and my mom took me out of the movie theater. Um, So he's pretty much the same where he's like, you know, we're good. I'm this is a little scary. And I respect that. I'm not gonna be like, this is your father's film. You've got to watch this movie. It's like, all right, dude, I get it. It's totally fine. One day, one day you'll watch it. Hopefully you'll get to watch all three of them back to back to back when you're when you're older. Yes. And read all three of the books. Read all three of them. He's gotta read yes. all three. Yeah. And 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 why Shmoo asks. Do you ever scare yourself when you're writing? Oh, that's such a, good, such a great question. That's a great oh. question. Mm. Um, y- yes, because I think it is important to be a little bit in that moment. So it is good to like, if you're writing, turn the lights off. You know, if you're writing this, like that Harriet Hargrave stuff, I really did like, I turned the lights off and, you know, it was I had a candle going and all that spooky mm-hmm. stuff. It is important to be a little, little scared. But I do write the kids stuff because I don't want to be scared all the time. I don't want to be absolutely horrified um, because once you start getting that scary stuff in your mind, it's kind of hard to get it out. Um, but yeah, definitely. I think you should, you should write what scares you and should be a little bit scared. You know, And it does help if you are writing um, scary stuff, try to write it in the dark with the lights off when everyone's asleep. Whole different ball game. Writing at like noon, writing a scary scene, edit your scary scene at noon, but write it, write the first draft of it at night, whole different world. That's a good idea too for children at home right now. You can make ambiance, you know, like I dimmed my lights and I have my my tea lights. You can write your own scary stories and then read them to your family. You have all those ambiance. I feel like doing that myself, sitting in the dark writing and then you can edit that you know at noon where it's you know yeah. light out and you're you're have more energy you gotta, yeah you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be in the be in the zone there that midnight midnight is the zone to be in for the scary stuff for sure but kids do you don't need so to have- at midnight just wait till the till it's dark he <laughs> says midnight's maybe too late <laughs> yeah, too but maybe late. you know maybe nine yeah how do we make the printing look so nice? From okay, I'm not cool. So, Joe, you always do such a great job because actually, Joe Ballerini was also why Joe is such a good friend of the Los Angeles Public Library, especially the Studio City branch, is because it's his branch. But, but also, he had a podcast recording with our children chatting with Authors Book Club, and I'll put the link in the in the chat about that too. So you can listen to Joe Ballerini talk more about his books with our book club. But you do such a great job of explaining the process of the book. So I think the question could be also because I printed the cover and the film and I did it at the library and I just printed it, I printed it legal size and I just got the image off the, off the web and I just printed it legal size. So I don't know if it's the question was about how I got it to print so nice. Yeah, I just printed it. Yeah, because I, 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 I back there. Look at this. Legal, you, legal size. I, I can even <laughs> a file oh! this big. What do you want? What do you want, kids? You want a big file? Maybe I'll upload, I'll upload some files to the Facebook uh, so that if you guys, if you want a gigantic poster like that in your room, and also I could upload the, I think the, the movie poster is up there too. I do. Yeah. There you go. There you go. You I send will... it out to your local printer. You're good. You could do it. We'll figure out how to get that to you, everyone. We'll figure out how to get you a file. Uh, so you can make a poster out of the book cover or the film. We will get that information to you as soon as possible. So, uh, so we answered that question, but Joe, can you spend just a minute talking about the process of the book? Because they may also be asking how you got, the covers are really great of all your books. Yeah. So well, two Beasts and Geeks. Beasts and Geeks, yes. Beasts and Geeks. The co- I mean, look, the covers look so wonderful because we have an incredible illustrator named Vivian Toe, who is a, <laughs> yeah. a wonderful, wonderful illustrator who has 
painted, designed, illustrated all of the books. And uh, she's done incredible, incredible work. I mean, you know, basically, uh, I sort of send some ideas and I say, oh, I think it would be really cool if we had this sort of singular image. And I think this is very important to have on the cover. Um, but, you know, Vivian pretty much nailed this. I think her first, this is one of her first drafts was, was just Kelly uh, standing in the doorway with like Victor behind her. And I think the one suggestion I had was like, oh, could we just have some more scary shadows around it? So um, that was, you know, that was sort of it, but you know, she's get yourself a great illustrator kids that I highly recommend it. And yeah, Vivian's, Vivian's illustrations are really spot on. And what I like to do is I will send like visual references and things. So I will send like, oh, this is, you know, I imagine this is sort of what his outfit looks like, or this is what his hair is gonna look like, or, you know, the goatee legs and all that. So you do send in a lot of visual references for uh, for the illustrator to be um, creative with, but then you really have to trust them to to make it pretty awesome. And she does. Thanks, Vivian. She did a great job. Great job. She did. Oh, we got some great more questions. Someone said, "Congratulations, that's so nice." No piccolo. Oh, no, that's so nice. Last of the past. Um, Thanks for watching. That's lovely. And then. Avid asks, do you handwrite or type your drafts? Oh, such great questions. Do you handwrite or type your drafts? Um, I have a, I have a, a, like a whole closet filled with notebooks. I write a lot of stuff on notebooks. So at first just, cause I like to draw um, and doodle and, and everything. And that's very helpful and inspiring, but I, I, it's usually just ideas. So if you look at the, if you look at the, um, if you look at the notebooks, they're just kind of filled with sketches of things and ideas and bullet points. Writing is usually always uh, on the on the on the keyboard and writing it out just because I, I sort of like the typing of it because I can I can type faster than I can write. And um, so yeah, it's a lot of typing. But then if I get stuck, bring out the old notebook and then you just sort of sketching around and writing around and everything. Um, and that's always very, very helpful. Um, if you're ever stuck on something, move off of a different medium. If you're stuck writing, go to the go to the screen. If you're stuck in the screen, go to the page. Uh, and that's always really helpful. Do you think California or Rhode Island is a scarier place? I mean, right now, California is much scarier. We've got way too many fires and uh, a lot going on. But um, we went back to Rhode Island. Uh, I took my wife, Cara, and our, our our son, Theo, back to Rhode Island a few years ago for a summer just to go be like, hey, check it out. And we stayed in a place that was terrifying. It was like, it was a really buggy house. And we were there for like two nights and I was like, isn't this great? Look, we're in Rhode Island. But there were just <laughs> bugs everywhere. And it was like a lovely seaside cottage, but it was definitely had some babysitter's guide vibes in there. So we left and went to a hotel very soon after. Um, so that was very, very spooky. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, I think with our, with our, with our fiery situation here, I think it's definitely, a, a, unfortunately, a scarier place for us right now. Definitely. Oh, this is great. How did you come up with the name Grand Gunal? I also think it's pretty amazing how smart you made the babysitters. I'm glad you like smart. I love a smart babysitter. As someone who hired a lot of babysitters, you need a smart babysitter, right? And we should all be so lucky to have a babysitter as smart as Kelly or Liz. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the name, the Grand Guignol, comes from. Uh, it was a. This is a very obscure reference. But first of all, Grand Guignol just sounds scary. You know, just sounds, what is that? I've never really heard that before. But the Grand Guignol was a type of theater in France at the turn of the century that was a really, uh, like a like a really gross, scary theater. Um, Google the Grand Guignol, kids, and you'll, maybe you'll see a picture of Tom Felton, but you will also find out <laughs> that at the turn of the century, people were going to like theater, not movies, but like live theater. And, and people on stage would be, like pretending to murder each other and like hack each other to pieces. And they would have fake blood spread into the audience. 
I don't know why I was like, that sounds awesome. That sounds like the craziest theater going experience I've ever seen. Um, and so the, because the character of the Grand Guignol is so theatrical and is so sort of very performative and is, you know, sort of thinks he's a bit of a rock star. I just thought, oh, that's kind of an appropriate name uh, for the Grand Guignol. And, uh, you know, I think one person's picked up on like, hey, wait a second. This guy has called his villain the Grand Guignol and he's not that. He's not that gory. And it's like, no, dude, it's for kids. What did you think I was going to be? Do you think I was going to be making, like horrifying, you know, splatter, splatter theater for kids? No, I would not. But I thought maybe if they looked it up, they'd be like, well, that's very interesting. I did not know that. So that's where I got the name, the Grand Guignol. And the Grand Guignol in the book and in the film is very spooky, but also. Very there's a lot of humor to him. Yes. He's a very funny guy. I mean, he's, you know, he's a bit of a screw up, you know, he doesn't, he's got a bit of a plan, but it kind of doesn't come to fruition. He doesn't really know what he's doing because as you'll see in the books, he's like the lowest on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. so like, yes. imagine how bad it's going to get for these kids because this is like the lowest of the boogie boogie people. Um, imagine how bad it's actually going to get mm -hmm. uh, for these kids. Cause yeah, that Grand Guignol is a funny guy. You know, he's, he's, he's a little out of practice, that poor guy. So he's, you know, he's basing his entire plan on the dreams of a child. That is, you know, not exactly a solid foundation to be like, cool. I'm just going to make a bunch of nightmares come true. It's like, that's, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty silly plan. So he's a pretty silly guy. <laughs> If you want to hear more of Joe Ballerini, please, I'm putting it in the chat right now as well. Children Chatting with Authors. Joe Ballerini has his podcast episode with the Children Chatting with Authors podcast. I click on that link, subscribe, or go to iTunes Children Chatting with Authors. And I'll also put that in the chat. Because, Joe, you're pretty hilarious in, in that podcast episode as well. That bo the book club you run is super fun. Those are some smart, smart kids. That one kid is going to be running a company by the time he's 12. All of them. Cyrus. Yeah, those are <laughs> kids are, let's be real. Like kids who are showing up for a book club, those kids are dedicated. Those kids are like, they're on another level. They're, those are some book kids and book kids are, they're pretty smart. Joe, yeah, we'll end with this great question. Are there any boy babysitter characters in your books? Oh, totally. Yeah. Julie, you better believe there are. There's mm -hmm. Curtis Critter. Curtis Critter is one of the great babysitters. He's one of the sits, sitters in training. Um, mm -hmm. Curtis uh, is, you know, he's he's a he's a boy babysitter. I was I was a boy babysitter when I was a kid. That's one of the reasons I started this book, because I was asked. Uh, to babysit a kid when I was way too young and I should not have been babysitting this kid, but I did it, you know, boys can be babysitters too. So I think that's, that's pretty important uh, to show that like, you know, boys, girls, you could be a babysitter either way. You can slay monsters and save kids no matter what. Absolutely. Joe, thank you so much for sharing your time and talent with us this afternoon and for kicking off, helping kick off Hollow Week. So now there's going to be some information coming across the screen right now and also in the chat, some information about Hollow Week. What do you think, Snaggle? Snaggle interested? Let's see if Snaggle's interested as well. Snaggle the Toad is also interested in the Halloween events. Presented by the Los Angeles Public Library all week long. So if you click on that link right now, it'll, be, it'll show up in the chat, but you'll see on the screen. If you click on that, there will be events every day, including this Saturday on Halloween, that you can check out every afternoon, 2 p.m. There will also, also be the Chris Cole for Author event on Friday at 4 and the Halloween party on Saturday at 11 a.m. But if you want more information about the Halloween events this week, please click on that link and explore and join us virtually all week long. I'm so happy we're able to connect this way. Joe, it's always great to see you. Always a pleasure. Always. Great, great dear happy friend. Friday. Happy Halloween. Great dear friend of the Los Angeles Public Library, Studio City Branch, 
Joe, I, I know I'll be I'll be seeing you soon. But yeah, um, you soon. Yes. Oh, it's Thank Gabe. You. Hi, Gabe. Yes, I'll see you in 10 minutes for a book club. Thanks, Gabe. Gabe. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys. Happy Halloween. Thanks oh. for Bye, Oh, everybody. Joe, and so much is proud of you. Oh, uh, that's very sweet. Who's that? Uh well, that's that's thank you very much, Dad. Appreciate that. And that's how we I end. Know, up. I know it was your dad. It is so nice. Thanks. 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 Oh. What a great oh, way to end. to end. Billy and Tommy. Hi guys. Nice to see you. Uh, that's so nice. And they're gonna check out the podcast. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for checking out the podcast as well. Let's end with our ambiance. Happy yeah. Halloween, everyone. Happy Enjoy Halloween. the week. Halloween. Look out Halloween. for those events. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, Joe. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.